I saw God giving him a platform in Hollywood, this one. I saw him becoming very known and very famous. I don't know what you do, but I saw your star just going Because when I looked at him, I saw him becoming as big as Kevin Hart, this one. Oh, what do you do? <laughs> Stand up comedy. <laughs> in the realms of the spirit, when you were carrying him, there was a big challenge in the realm of the spirit. It was a difficult pregnancy to yeah. carry him. Yeah. To the point that it looked like you're going to lose him at some point. Yeah. Because I remember, I am seeing it in the realms of the spirit. When you're about four months, going to five months, yeah. I saw you bleeding that yeah. you thought that you actually lost him. Yes, yes! Professor! So I am trying to understand what these two angels are saying because I'm hearing one saying, God with us, and the other one is saying Emmanuel. Uh, what is that? I saw him doing this, throwing seeds. When people are throwing seeds, it means they have a calling, a pastoral calling to feed people and to raise people. Huh? You say what? In the realm of the spirit, you see what is on your shirt. The Lord said me, your name is what is on your shirt. Hallelujah! What is your name? Rose. What do you have on your shirt? Hallelujah! Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know why. Where is my mama Ghana power? I saw fire jumping from her and coming to you. And I'm trying to understand why. When I looked at you, I saw her. When I saw her, I saw you. Are you a nurse? You're in the medical field. Yeah. Go to her, put the mic on her. I'm a nurse. Were you married before? Divorce. Okay, go to my mama Ghana. I'm divorced. I saw somebody else with a name like Campbell. Campbell. As I was walking in the realms of the spirit, God says that he's about to bless the Campbell family. Prophesy. I saw somebody in the Bible called Anna, but God said no, Anne. Tracy Ann. Ah. Prophesy. I saw God taking words and ran with it to the ends of the world. What does he do? Amen. Who is like oh, oh, Gaga, oh, Gaga. Do you know somebody called Kenny? Kenny, yes, that's me. Yes. Kenny it? Ogba Ogaga. Kenny <laughs> Ogba Ogaga. <laughs> Professor. Who's, who has a name that starts with like an M? Just said Maria. Maria. Yeah. <laughs> because I was looking at you there, I'm seeing an M on your forehead. I saw God putting a garment on somebody called Jonathan. My first name. Prophesy. In 2013, you are not supposed to be here. Hey! You had surgery. Major surgery. I looked at you and I saw an x-ray. I saw your body beyond the flesh. And the Lord told me that we need to pray for his lungs. I'm sick right now. Where? In the, the lungs. You've seen me before. I've never seen you before. How yeah. can I know these things? I know one thing about you. You are real. <laughs> You are
got my key I can never turn from you My everything I call my God My everything Oh, yeah My everything Yeah Oh, my everything My everything What kind of love is this? My heart and soul will sing What kind of love is this? My everything My everything My everything Breath of life The light that never fails Lead me on You are the only way When I am weak You are strong Your presence, Lord Is my home You're the only one for me You are my key I can never turn from you My everything I call my God My everything Oh, yeah My everything Yeah Oh, my everything My everything What kind of You're so mighty, but you're full of compassion. You're the giver of a life everlasting. You're the savior of the world, Messiah. All I need, I find in you, provider. Worthy, wonderful, awesome, powerful, glory, glory. My heart sings, perfect suffering king, God of everything. Glory, glory to you. I lift my hands to worship. I lift my eyes to seek your holy face. I lift my voice. To honor you, yeah. There's no one else like you, Lord. I lift you. I don't understand your love. You're so patient. You surround me with your grace. It's amazing. Forgiving the way that I've been, and you changing the old me, old me. Didn't know who I could be till you show me. Worthy, wonderful, awesome, powerful. Glory, glory to you. My heart sings, perfect sovereign king, God of everything. Glory, glory.
God bless everybody. This is the prophet Lovi, and I am coming to you live from Los Angeles, California this evening. And I'm here with the great bishop, my son, the apostle John Victor Elias. And it's going to be amazing what we're going to talk about today. And I want to speak to you specifically about salvation, the truth about salvation. Uh, to be honest with you, I have seen so many people, son, mm. and many believers that are actually not knowledgeable, uh, that are not so knowledgeable when it comes to the understanding of salvation. I think the lack of revelation and the lack of knowing the heart of God has cost people and even other souls because they don't really understand what salvation is mm. and how it works. I'm going to attempt to, to do this one time because I've been feeling a burden since we did, um, uh, since we did, um, what was it called, uh, Shepherd's Table. You know, I've had this burden in my heart and I was like, I, I think the whole day today I was supposed to go live earlier. Yeah. But I was really wrestling with the burden. Should I speak about this or not about this? And God pressed on me to speak about this. So I want to speak to you about the truth about salvation. Amen. The truth Amen. about it. Amen. The reality, uh, the reality of it and the truth about salvation. Amen. Amen. To be honest with you, maybe 20% people, out, like uh, over 100% of people who call themselves Christians, maybe 20% of them actually understand salvation. Wow. That should scare you. Yeah. There's a lot of people that are not going to make heaven and they're Christians. Wow. wow. Because this truth, they are not knowledgeable of it that we're about to share. Amen. You know, God is merciful. God is amazing. God is, God is amazing in so many ways that he finds a way to take us to himself. Mm. Mm. But the reality is this, if it is not for grace, you know, the thing about grace is we depend on grace, but you have to know how grace works for you to depend on it. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Grace yeah. does not just flow. That's why the Bible says, grow in grace, meaning immerse yourself more in grace. And we're yeah. going to talk about that. Amen. Now, why is it important for you to really know what it means to be saved? If you don't know what it means to be saved, it's a dangerous thing. Mm. When you give your life to Jesus, you have been given an invitation to heaven, but you're not yet in heaven. Wow. You have been given an invitation to heaven but you're not yet in heaven. So many people have started well, but have ended wrong. Wow. You have to ask yourself, why is there, why is God saying some people are faithful and some are not? Mm. Remember, whoever is a servant is somebody that God actually called. But some people get to him and he says, I don't know, you get away from me. Huh? Wow. wow. It means that he messed up somewhere, mm. that it cost him not only the job that he was given to do by God, but it cost him his own soul because God is saying, you're not faithful, throw him in the lake of fire. Mm. But people never think about this thing because we miss a very important point and what the point that we miss, I'm going to speak about it today. Amen. 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 And I'm going to attempt to give you a map of the spiritual realm to heaven. Amen. Amen. Somebody didn't hear what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. I'm going to attempt to give you a map of the spiritual realm. Amen. By knowing what I'm going to give you, 
if you are wise, you will know where you are on that map. Mm. Mm. Because the Bible says we are on a journey. The journey is not to death. Mm. There is a journey we are following. There is a road we are following called the narrow road mm. that even the Lord Jesus spoke about. Mm. Uh, the prophets spoke about. Mm. There is a specific road that takes you to, Jesus, to God. Mm. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So there is a way. Mm. So when you receive Jesus, you have not met the Father. That's why Jesus said, nobody comes to the Father unless they go through me. Mm. So Jesus is a way. He is not heaven. Yeah. Wow. He is the way to heaven. Wow. Wow. So just because I said, Jesus, I receive you as Lord and Savior, does not guarantee that I'm in heaven. Wow. wow. That's deep. Wow. I wish somebody could hear what I'm saying. I hear you, I hear wow. You know, there are people who have this concept of once saved, always saved. It's not true. It's absolutely not true. It's a lie. Wow. This is why it's so important. Uh, even at Shepherd's Table, I spoke about this and I said, uh, I see, the, uh, Gabby says, Gabby Elias says, I, the great John. Absolutely. He is very great. I'll tell you this. In Shepherd's Table, I discussed something and I said, it is an abomination to say you are a servant of God, but you have no specific message or a specific mandate from the master to the people. Mm. Who mm. are you sent to? What man of people have you sent, been sent to? What location have you been sent to? And what is the message to them? Mm. Wherever Jesus went, he had a specific message for those people. Yeah. Wherever the prophets went, they had a specific message for those people because yeah. they were sent by God. They did not send themselves. Mm. How many men and women of God do we know today that preach just a verse? Oh, I have this verse. I'm going to share this, this verse or this, that. Oh, I read a good scripture. I'm going to. That's not what ministry is about. Mm. And that's how Christians are also living because they don't understand where they are in the realm of the spirit. Mm. So if you don't understand where on the map to heaven you are, on the road to heaven you are, you may have fallen and you don't know that you are out of the way. Wow. 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 Narrow is the way that leads to heaven. Mm -hmm. Narrow, not white. Mm -hmm. Narrow. Some people you will hear this and you will give your life to Jesus again. Amen. You realize that Amen. you never really gave your life to Christ. Amen. Amen. It's not just a simple confession, oh, I give my life, I give you as my life as a Lord and Savior. That is part of it, but it's not the whole of it. Mm. This is why the disciples, when they met the Lord Jesus, when they spent time with Jesus, they were not the same apostles when you read the book of Acts, you read the, 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 the Acts, you read the Corinthians, the Hebrews. You are like, these are totally different people because yeah. you see the transformation, not only in the physical dimension, but you understand in the spiritual dimension, mm, mm. their level and where they are located is different from before. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. And you all of a sudden, you see the same people that ran mm. from Jesus when he was going to the cross, they themselves embraced the death mm. and they were willing to die. Yeah. That Apostle Paul will say message, uh, statements like this, to live is Christ, to die is gain. Mm. They began to see death as gain because they understood something that others did not understand. Mm. Wow. wow. If you do not understand what salvation is, you cannot maintain what you don't know. Mm. True, true. If you have a car that you don't take it for service, you will not keep it. Very true. Very true. If you have a house that you don't maintain it, you will lose it. Mm. You will become a place that, that will be unlivable. Mm. If you have clothes that you don't wash, you will not be able to wear it. Mm. Yeah. How can you how can you now? Let's read this verse quickly. Grab your Bible. Let's read this verse quickly. And then I will explain to you something. Hmm. Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. Prophet Justin, Amen. God bless you. Philippians 2 12. Read Amen. it. Uh -huh. Wherefore, my beloved, 
mm. as ye have always obeyed, mm -hmm. not as in my presence only, mm -hmm. but now much more in my absence. Mm -hmm. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, did you re read that again one more time? Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation. Now, why is he saying, why is he saying, why is he saying, uh, listen guys, I was with you. Don't do you, it was easier when I was with you and I was helping you, but now I'm mm. not with you. Listen guys, work out your own salvation mm. with fear and trembling. Mm. Ah, so he's telling them, meaning they were not completely. <laughs> if I tell you, work out your own salvation, I'm saying that you're not yet there yet. Uh, somebody did mm, not get mm, what I'm mm, saying. Mm, mm, mm. That's true. If I'm telling you, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, I'm telling you there are dangers. Mm. You need to work it out daily. You must maintain it daily. You must look at your relationship with God daily. You must make sure that you are positioned with God in such a place whereby you are not missing God. Because mm. missing God can cost you heaven. Wow. 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 The young prophet was sent to a city, was told by God, go in there, preach, don't eat anything, leave. Mm. He stayed at the city gates, I, an old prophet that God rejected. Remember, that prophet in the city should have been the one that gave the message to the people. Mm. But God didn't speak to him. God brought another guy to go and preach the message there. Mm. That is how a lot of men of God are. Wow. God has to bring other people to preach a message. But now the foolish young prophets or young ministers, they come into the field. They meet people that used to be there. Mm. They follow the example, not realizing that God stopped talking to these people. Wow. They are already in danger because remember this prophet told him, I am a prophet to come and eat. And the moment he ate with him, he was devoured by a lion. He was destroyed. Mm. Did he work his salvation out with trembling? No. No, he didn't. <laughs> I don't know if somebody's listening to me. So, Papa. Yes. What you mismanage, you lose. What you mismanage, you lose. Mm. What you cannot manage or maintain, you lose. Let me explain to you the truth about heaven and going to heaven. Mm. There are dangers because there are different cities in the realm of the spirit. And I'll tell you this from my experience. Amen. I had this experience because I myself, and I'm, and I'm telling you the truth, if I, you know, I have to tell you the truth because you can never teach, you can never teach or bless people with what you don't have. So I have to be honest with you. I have to be completely honest with you. Amen. From time to time, I check in the realm of the spirit where I am on the map. Mm. I do. But there was a time I, I wasn't paying attention to certain things. And le many years le after I had that experience in which I will explain to you, and God delivered me from a certain situation. From that point, I feared so much and I never played with it again. Yeah. The only other person that I saw actually having the same map that I experienced on my journey and the city that I was trapped in was a man of God from a long time ago called John Bunyan. Mm. Was that the only other man of God that I ever saw with that. After my experience, one day I stumbled in here and said, oh my gosh, this is the exact city that I was in. Mm. And he wrote about this map also when he was in prison being persecuted for the faith. Mm. Let me explain to you. Let's read another verse, and then, I'll, and, I'll, and then I'll try and explain this more. Are you ready? Yes, well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 26. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 26. Amen. Mm -hmm. Know ye not mm -hmm. that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? Meaning not everybody's going to make heaven. Wow. Read it again. Know ye not mm -hmm. that they which run in a race mm -hmm. run all, but one mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. receiveth the prize. Mm-hmm. So run that ye may obtain. Uh-huh. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Uh-huh. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, mm-hmm. but we an incorruptible. So he's saying have the mastery of what God has given you. Mm. Like the ones in the world. The people in the world have mastery for what is perishable. But you still need mastery for what is not going to perish. Mm. He's not mm-hmm. saying that it is easier. Mm. He's saying the same way athletes prepare for a championship that only one person is going to win. Yeah. is the same way you should prepare for heaven. Wow. Because you can miss it. Wow. The wow. same way they have mastery in whatever skill that they, they own to, to gain something. is the same way even though what they're gaining will perish. You need to also work out. So that what you gain, you, you gain something that you will not perish. Wow. 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 That makes sense. Listen to me, people. Salvation is serious business. It's not a game. It's not a game. It is absolutely not a game. It is serious. Listen to what Apostle Paul is saying. The one who preached grace is telling you this. Mm. Keep reading. I, therefore, so run, not as uncertainly... Uh, read it again. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. So fight I, not as one that beateth the air. Mm-hmm. But I keep under my body mm-hmm. and bring it into subjection. Mm-hmm. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, mm-hmm. I myself should be cast away. Meaning he was preaching, but he could have also not entered heaven even though he was a minister. Wow. And people think that you can lose salvation. It's craziness. Wow. He's saying, I am not doing this, I'm doing this carefully Mm. so that me, myself, I don't miss what I'm talking about. Meaning just because I am a prophet, just because you are a prophet, just because you are an apostle, just because you have gifts, just because doesn't mean you're making heaven if you're not careful. Mm. This is deep. There is a spirit in the realm of the spirit. There's a spirit in the realm of the spirit on your journey to heaven. You meet this spirit. (laughs) I I wish somebody would share this. I, I wish somebody would share this. I wish somebody would share this. I'm about to share something with you. Amen. Ah. This is deep. Jesus, our Lord help us. I, I wanna I wanna show you something that will shock you. Hmm. There's a spirit called ignorance that you meet on your way to heaven. Mm. There are two spirits that are, uh, there are three spirits that are very dangerous. One is flattery. Ignorance. And worldly wisdom. Flattery, ignorance, and worldly wisdom. These spirits these spirits are very dangerous. Mm. But every Christian must encounter them. There are certain demons you will meet by force because they are on the road. Mm. Their duty is to try to remove anybody from that road. Flattery. Ignorance. Worldly wisdom. There are others, but I'm mentioning this because these ones are the most common ones. Mm. Worldly wisdom tells you, ah, you are just human. You put the doctrines of of the flesh into the faith, thinking that 
it will help you. Mm. Ah, I will repent tomorrow because ah, let me do it today and tomorrow I'll repent and you know God will forgive me. Now the Bible says God cannot be mocked, meaning you cannot cheat God. Mm. So if I've lived my life deliberately, and notice I said deliberately, evil, so that on my deathbed I can confess Jesus as Lord, I am mm. not going to heaven. Wow. Because you can't cheat the system. Mm. The Bible says God cannot be mocked. Mm. Do you think God is a fool that you've lived all your life you with no intention for him? When you're afraid of death, you say, Lord, I give you my life. Mm. What life? He's not going to accept you. Yeah. It is different for somebody who never knew God. Mm. And on their deathbed, they hear the gospel or God appears because there are people who are about to die that God visits. Mm. And they realize that God rescues them from that moment and they say, Lord, I didn't know. And they give their life to God. God will take them and rescue them. Mm. But you deliberately, living carelessly, saying, I will repent tomorrow and tomorrow it's going to be really good and God will just take me because he's merciful. Mm. God cannot be mocked. You cannot trick God. Wow. You can't cheat the system like that. Remember, you're dealing with a person, not with the law. Mm. Yeah. And that is called undermining God. And that's worldly wisdom. I will do it last minute. Ah, it doesn't matter. Let me do my thing and then. Worldly wisdom. Mm. You can't cheat the system. Lots of believers are living like that. Wow. So many believers are living like that. I will live carelessly. I will do this and live my life and then, ah, but, you know, God will be merciful. Mm. So you are thinking your wisdom, you are deliberately mocking God, undermining God, and you think by doing that, God will forgive you. Ananias and Sapphira tried to undermine Peter and they died. Mm. Where do you think they are? Peter told them, you think that, why did you allow the devil to corrupt your heart? Mm. You thought you were talking to me, but you're talking to the Holy Ghost. You undermined God. You're going to die. We are burying you now. They both dropped dead and they were buried. Mm. The fear of God is understanding the full extent of God's power. Understanding that God is not somebody you play with. Mm. God is not your grandpa. He's not your girlfriend or your boyfriend. He's not Bay. He's mm. God. Mm. <laughs> His father, he's kind, he's amazing. But you cannot play with him. Yeah. Ignorance. The spirit of ignorance works like this. God is love anyway. He would never throw me in hell. Mm. You don't need to pray all the time. That's kind of being religious-ish. Mm. Are, are you catching what I'm saying? Yes, 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 I tell yes. Claudius to help them because I think they are trying to come in. And then that gate has to be closed too. <laughs> are, are you catching what I'm saying? Yes, 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 ignorance, yes. Is, ignorance says that he says, ah, God is just kind, God is just merciful. You know, God is just so amazing. You know, mm. God is just so good. You know, God, ah, God is love. How can God being love throw people in hell? How can God be like this? You're ignorant of who God is. Mm. You're assuming who God is instead of knowing who God is. Mm. Mm. Ignorance. <laughs> mm. How many Christians are ignorant? So many. Wow. Too many. Not only are many having worldly wisdom, mm. so many are ignorant. Mm. I'm not saying this to condemn anybody. I'm just telling you the truth. And I will be alive if I don't tell you the truth. Ah, you know, I just do this, I just do that, and then, you know, God, God is like, you know, God is kind, God is just amazing, and, and you know, God will never do that. Ah, God, Jesus, Jesus is love, man. You're ignorant. You don't understand that perfect love carries perfect justice. Mm. If he's truly a God of justice, then his love has to be just. Mm. It doesn't mean if God throws you in hell, he doesn't love you. 
He loves you, but he must serve the justice. Wow. In fact, wow. God loves everybody that is in hell. He doesn't hate anyone. Wow. But because he's a just God, his justice must be expressed. Wow. If he provided a way out and a way to stay on that way, and you choose another way, he still loves you because he provided a way for you, but you chose another way. You will experience what that way has. Hmm. It doesn't mean that he doesn't love you. Wow. We think love is favor. That's why God gives favor to whom he feels like. Hmm. But when you leave this world, <laughs> it's a different story. Ignorance. Hey, you know, I'm just going to do this for a little bit and then, you know, ah, God, God understands. He knew I was going to mess up anyway. Hmm. God, <laughs> I remember one guy uh, prayed this way. You know, God, I know. You don't understand what I'm doing this, but I just have to do it. <laughs> I looked at this guy and said, hey, do you know who you're praying to? Everybody keep sharing this. Let me see Facebook, uh, YouTube, YouTube. Are you listening to our people, the ignorance of people? Yes. Marcus, Ellen, thank you for your, your, your seed. Uh, I appreciate it. All those people on YouTube using Super Chat, may God increase you, multiply you, keep using it, keep using it, and keep using it. My son Fabian, God bless you. Uh, everybody that is using Super Chat, God bless you. Uh, my son Mike Dupree, God bless you. Uh, Fabian again, God bless you. This is deep. So, so are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. This is strange. But we play games with God. I had the great bishop sitting next to me. Thank you for your amazing seed. Amen. I don't know if somebody is catching me. Yes, 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 yes. Papa, is this related to the scripture where the Lord says, my children are destroyed for lack of knowledge. A hundred percent. He did not say, do you know what to perish means? He doesn't, he's not saying they are attacked. <laughs> <laughs> to perish means you are going to hell. Wow. My people literally go to hell because of lack of knowledge. Mm. That's what perishing is. You shall perish. Mm. He's not saying you will die. die is, dying is sleep. Mm. You will perish. Ah, oh. Because what? You don't know. Mm. That is a very scary thing. It's a super, super scary thing. My wow. daughter turned, God bless you. Then there's a spirit called flatterers. Mm. In uh, Proverbs, actually, it speaks about flatterers that you end up in a net. Mm. Flatterers tell you, ah. You, the way you, you pray in tongues, hey, sh you have too much anointing, too much power. They make you, they pump you up in what you do and not what Christ has done. Mm, mm, mm. So you lose your way because you have followed their way. Remember, anything that influences you out of Christ leads you on another path in that world. Mm. So you're on this path. There are difficulties on this path. On this path. There are roads that you have to take. There's no shortcut. There's no shortcut, actually. But anybody that comes, you meet on that journey that can influence you, makes you do a detour away from the celestial city. Mm. Away, sorry, away from heaven. Mm. And it makes you to turn a different way. Some people will just, ah, that's why you find, have you ever noticed when somebody comes and tells me, ah, prophet, you are deep. I say, ah, we thank God. Mm -hmm, have you ever mm -hmm, noticed mm -hmm. I ignore that stuff? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Every time. Every, Every single time. time. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Because I know the danger of it. Mm -hmm. It's not that I'm not deep. I know that God has gifted me. Not only revelation, but in the prophetic and in the miraculous. Ah, but I will not get carried away by seeing like I'm the one doing it. I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. He's doing it. Mm -hmm. 
He's given me the ability to do it, to lead people to him. Amen. I can't get carried away as if I'm the one that invented those things. Mm. I started this. Oh, nah. It's dangerous. Mm -hmm. So many people are destroyed because of that. Especially if you look at our African minister. Especially in Africa, in America too. In the Western world too. My daughter Williams, God bless you. Everybody wants to be called major. Everybody wants to be called. I'm not saying like, listen, if people call you that is cool, but you giving yourself titles to puff yourself up is dangerous. Mm. It really is. I am the majorest prophet. I am the majorest. Why? What's the point? To what gain? If we put the same energy speaking about Jesus, will not more people get saved? True. If we put more emphasis on the love of Jesus, more than puffing ourselves up. Some people have, uh, I saw one person, apost apostle, evangelist, prophet to the nations. Eish. That's a lot of work, eh? Apostle, evangelist, prophet to the nation. I saw another one, uh, uh, doctor, apostle, prophet, seraphim. <laughs> <laughs> Seraphim something. I was like, these people. <laughs> hey, God. <laughs> it's half the body. Bishop, Bishop Jones, God bless you. My son, Bishop Jones, God bless you. He, 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 do you get what I'm saying? Mm. Yes, 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 yes. So, Papa, what's the line between making your boast in God and self ah. puffing yourself. What does it, when I say I'm making my boast in Victor, is I'm saying whatever I'm saying is pointing to Victor. Hmm. I am making my boast in him. Mm -hmm. So I am not pointing to me, I'm pointing to him. Because if I'm in him, then it's not pointing to me. Hmm. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. I'm making my boast in God. Ah! Jesus can speak to you. Can I prophesy? I'm making my boast in him, mm. not me. Mm. Are you catching what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. But if you do it the other way, me, I will show you the prophetic. I'm the one. <laughs> now it is no longer about him. Remember, Elisha said something. He said, tell the king to come that he may know there, there is a prophet in Israel. Mm. What does a prophet mean? The word prophet there, that's where a lot of people are missing. Prophet means one who utters what God is saying. He mm. said, tell him to come. He will know that there is somebody that speaks on behalf of God. Mm. He is speaking about God, not about him. Mm. Black Jeremiah, black this, it's just nonsense. Because we, we want, we want people to puff us up, we want people to lift us up, but we don't understand. We may lose the goal ourselves. Mm. And usually this is a great evidence that they have not really known Christ. Mm. Wow. Let me give you one more verse and then I'll give you a small roadmap in that world. Amen. It's very dangerous and I'll tell you my own experience where I got stuck for a long time. At a certain season of my life, God had to save me from there. Amen. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. You, Facebook, are you there? Keep sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing. And I will teach you how to maintain your salvation. Amen. Amen. Papa, that last part, mm -hmm. was that uh, similar to Joseph? when he said, uh, God is the one that interprets dreams. Yes. Tell me, me the tell dream. Me. Yes. Okay. He was not speaking about himself. He was saying that <laughs> God, he was speaking about him in God, not him. Mm. Okay. First Timothy 1 verse 12. Mm -hmm. 
And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, mm -hmm. who hath enabled me, mm -hmm. for that he counted me faithful, mm -hmm. putting me into the ministry, mm -hmm. who was before a blasphemer mm -hmm. and a persecutor mm -hmm. and injurious, but I obtained mercy mm -hmm. because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Mm -hmm. And the grace of our Lord mm -hmm. was exceeding abundant with mm -hmm. faith and mm -hmm. love, mm -hmm. which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation mm. that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners mm. of whom I am chief. Mm -hmm. How be it for this cause I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering mm. for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Who's making the pattern? Him. Mm. But he's saying when I was blaspheming God was not on purpose. I was ignorant. Mm. You can't blaspheme God on purpose and think you get away with it. Mm. Do you see how we double and we are, we are playing games and we don't understand what we are playing with? Mm. Wow. When people look at you, are you a flip-flopper? Today you are living like this, today you are living like that, today you are living like... It's dangerous. Let me explain to you, I will use John Bunyan's map and I will use my map and put it together and explain to you. Amen. Anybody that gets you want to follow God, you want to give your life to Jesus, you come from a city called the city of destruction. Mm. You come from a city called the city of destruction. Why is it called the city of destruction? Remember, in the realm of the spirit, the earth is not seen like an entity outside. of. It's like it's part of the spiritual realm. It's part of one land. Mm. If I should say, that's why Jesus said, I am the road. Mm. I am the way that leadeth to heaven. I am the way, the truth, and life. So it's like people coming from one part of the country to another country. That's why the Bible says that Abraham was seeking a land that was not made by humans, human hands. Mm. He was seeking another land. Mm. Mm -hmm. are, are you getting what yes. I'm saying? So everybody that is still in the world is living in the city of destruction. Mm. The literal name of the city is the city of destruction. Mm. The city of destruction. Why is it called the city of destruction? The label on the city that says, this place shall be destroyed at a certain time and all that remain in it will also die. Mm. Okay. That is why one day this earth will cease. And a new heaven and a new earth will be made. Why? Because this world is destined for destruction. And anyone that indulges in, it, indulges in it, anyone that wants to stay in it, anyone that enjoys it will also be destroyed because they will not leave that city. Mm. It's like knowing there is, there is an earthquake that is about to destroy this part of the country and you stay in it. What will happen to you? You get destroyed. You get destroyed. I don't know if it's making sense. I don't know if I'm making sense. Yes, well. Yes, yes, yes. So everybody that is in the city is coming from the city of destruction. What happens is, Jesus said, nobody comes unto me unless I call them. Mm -hmm. So God sends you an invitation in the midst of being in the city of destruction. Mm -hmm. God sends you an invitation, and the, when that invitation touches your heart, you start now realizing that, this, world, this country I am in is about to be destroyed. I cannot stay in it. I have to look for an escape. Yeah. And I have to get my family also out of this place. Mm. You start now realizing like this is not where I want to be. This is why I don't believe in people preaching hell. Mm. Because somebody will receive Jesus because they are afraid of fire, but not because they are going to stay faithful on the journey. Mm. People who receive God because or they want to follow God because of avoiding the grave. Usually when they are on the journey to the celestial city or heaven, mm. they will give up when there are difficulties and they will return back from where they came from. Mm. Because they will say, this journey is too difficult. I thought it would be easy. Mm. I thought it would be like this. I should have just stayed where I was. This is why the children of Israel, God trusted Moses to bring them out and he did not raise one among them. Because if things weren't difficult, they would have given back and given up and gone back to be slaves. Mm -hmm. This is why they told Moses, "One, well, they are not better graves. Imagine somebody that was a slave. I'd rather die free. 
than to die and be buried in a slave master's grave. Yeah, yeah. But their thinking was like, it's, were there not better graves? You are dead, what's the point? Mm. I'd rather die free. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. So, so many get the invitation in the, in the, in the, in the city of destruction. When this invitation comes, the first thing that happens is people start feeling in their heart. They start realizing in their heart, Eish, I've been living a life. I really need God. Because my life is not together. And not only that my life is not together, I desire to know the one that wants to save me from this place. I want to spend time with him. You see, heaven is about who is in heaven, not about the place. Mm. Because people who just want to go to heaven for heaven, are still using worldly wisdom and they still have not known the master. Not saying that God cannot rescue them from that, mm -hmm. but I'm saying that that is not a real invitation. Because when you make it to the heavenly realm, mm -hmm. at the gate of heaven, you will be asked for the invitation that you are given when you are called to him. Uh. If you don't have it, there is a shortcut at the gate of heaven direct to hell. Wow. wow. If you look at everybody that has a true hell experience, a heaven experience, like Mary Kay Baxter and a few people that I know, they tell you, oh, we were in heaven, we saw this, and immediately we were in hell. How did they just translate from heaven into mm, hell? Mm. Because there is a portal at the gate of heaven that leads you direct to hell. Wow. wow. That is why Jesus said, no thieves and robbers can enter it. Meaning there are people that have attempted to enter and invite it. Mm. Remember the marriage supper. Those who did not receive an invitation. God invited people. They didn't come. He mm -hmm. said, go get anybody that you find in the street. Bring them into the wedding yeah. and shut the door. Mm -hmm. Then when people who were invited wanted to come, they were told, no, you can't come in. Go to hell. Mm -hmm. They were thrown in hell. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus tell these stories. Why do we think we can sneak into heaven? Wow. I see the great prophet Emmanuel is watching. The great prophet Okpala. <laughs> I wish somebody could catch what I'm saying. Yeah. It's deep. It's profound. There's a shortcut straight at the gate of heaven to hell. That's why you find the master came and said, oh, I, I had five talents, I multiplied them. I had this, I multiplied them. Me, I hid mine. He said, cast this one right into hell. Ah, they were in the presence of the master, but there was a way to be cast to hell. Wow. Cast him into everlasting fire. Ah, cast him to outer darkness. What? From your presence, it can just turn sour like that. Yes. Mm. Wow. So, Papa, is this yes. why the Bible says, but he who is faithful to the end because uh, you can just you fall listen, short? Listen, listen, listen to what you're saying. I was going to come to that. He that is faithful to the end, meaning if you were stop being faithful in the middle, are you making heaven? Mm -mm. <laughs> He's saying be faithful to the end, even to the point of death. Do you know why Jesus is the Savior? Because he was obedient to the point of what? Death. Mm. Do you know why Apostle Paul and them chose to die? They said, crucify, said, crucify me upside down. Don't even crucify me like the Lord. They embraced the cross because the faithfulness that gets you into heaven is to the end, not in the beginning and the middle, and then you just live freestyle. Mm. You're deceiving yourself. Mm. Heaven is for those who love God, they are serious about God, they want to be with God, they don't want to be apart from God. They have realized there is no life apart outside of God. Mm. And their love for Him is what makes them walk with Him. Wow. So when you leave that now, when the invitation comes to the city of destruction, God calls you. There is a spirit called evangelist that will come for you. He's the one that will bring you the invitation. Mm. And then you, you start realizing, Eish, ah, your people may start fighting you. 
your people may start, you have this high, I want to walk with God, I want, everybody will begin to fight you because now you're beginning to exit the city. Mm. Some people try to tell you, no, 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 just stay. Uh, 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 uh. Some people say, I will get saved with you. Others will say, ah, why are you getting saved? Our life is good here. What are you talking about? That is for weak-minded people. That's for people who are like this. That's for people who are like that. They start discouraging you, but you stay faithful, you leave the city. Mm. Have you ever noticed that the moment you get saved, things turn bad? True. Because the moment you leave the city of destruction, the city of destruction was designed to keep you in it. Mm. So it's supposed to be comfortable with pleasures that are temporary that will destroy you, but it's, 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 it's supposed to keep you there. But now you have burdens when you're leaving that city because you have one problem. The problem will be that you know that you are not able to maintain a life that God wants you to live. But you want him so bad, so you begin to chase after him for him to help you. See, people who just want to escape hell, they don't worry about how they live. Mm. They are okay with how they live as long as they say Jesus is Lord, they think they are going to heaven. Ignorance has already entered them. Mm. They don't understand that there is no breaks in God. A break from God is a break from heaven. Mm. And a break from heaven takes you to hell. Mm. There's no retiring from God. <laughs> so when you live, when you live, when you live the city, the first thing that you encounter because you don't know the proper way, you're still trying to stay on the narrow path that the evangelists gave you. You end up in a swamp. There's a swamp in the realm of the spirit called the, the slot of despond. It's like all the, sit, all the sins of the city of destruction, they go there. So you get trapped there for some time. This is where condemnation comes. Are you really want to follow Jesus the way you are a sinner like this? You start getting those messages. Ah, will I really? Ah, what's the point? I'm a sinner anyway. Let me just continue. You feel trapped. Finances start going bad. Difficulties start arising. Things just become very difficult for you to maintain. You cannot live the way you used to live. The people you used to do business with don't want to do business with you anymore. The people you used to work with don't want to work with you anymore. Everything becomes so difficult. But if you cry to God, that's where you learn how to pray. Mm. Because the people you used to know cannot help you out of that place. Mm. Mm. It is now you building and starting to know your relationship with God is what will take you from that swamp. Amen. Remember, a swamp represents a stagnant place. Mm -hmm. It's not a river that flows, it's a swamp. Mm. A swamp is a stagnant place where there's no movement. This is where if you're in ministry, you used to do well when you are just doing gimmicks and now the church is not growing anymore. Mm. People are leaving. Things are difficult. Things are not going the way they used to. It's simple. It's very simple. You're in the swamp. This is where you learn to cry to God and depend on God and call to God for help. Mm. Amen. This is where you learn to now depend on God. Because the one that you from the city that said, let's get saved together is right. They will get to that place. They will say, ah, this is too difficult. They will turn back. Mm -hmm. Going back to the city of destruction, you can come out of the swamp. Going forward, you cannot until you call for help. Mm. Going back, easy. Going forward, you can't. Help has to come and get you out of that place. When you cry to God, God will send somebody called help. 
help will show you a way out of condemnation. Mm. That's when you learn, ah, God is greater than my sin. Mm. But God is also faithful to help me. Mm. Even though I am not free from what I used to do, but my hunger to be away from it, God will deliver me. I will receive deliverance. Now you understand now from the, from the swamp or stagnancy, you come to realize, wow, I surely, surely, surely need deliverance. Mm. There is no one who has ever been a believer and served God without deliverance. Mm. Everybody goes through a place called deliverance. Mm. Help will show you a way out. And you start heading straight on, you remain on the path. I'm just showing you beginning of Christian. This is why Christianity in the beginning is difficult. Mm. Every other religion is easy, not Christianity, mm. because it's the real path. Mm. 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 You get to a, a door, you are going to a door now, the door whereby you meet a teacher that will show you the way actually to the place called Calvary. But as you get close to that gate, Belzebub's fortress is close to that gate. One of Satan's fortresses is in that place, mm. close to that gate. Whenever people want to get to that door, arrows are shot. Arrows are shot. And many people have died in that location. Mm. Because when they shot the arrows, instead of them going forward to the gate, they ran back. And because they ran back, they captured them and killed them. Wow. This is where you meet persecution. Mm. You think you're holier than us because you're doing all this. We know what we, you, you do. Hmm. Now I'm just saying that we need to live a better life. We just, this is where persecution happens. This is where a lot of rejection happens. This is where people turn against you because you're about to enter a place now, the door where you meet the teacher who will give you the sound doctrine. Hmm. Where your ears will be cleaned to know, ah, this is how you walk with God. And from that place, that's where you are led to Calvary. Mm. When you get to the place called Calvary, that is where the burden of sin falls from you. Mm. That is when real deliverance comes into your life. Things Amen. you used to struggle with, you can't struggle with it anymore because the truth and the fullness of the cross has become your reality. Amen. You come to the place whereby your flesh is crucified with Christ. You have died with Christ. Mm. So whether you used to be a liar, whether you used to drink, whether you used to struggle with this, whether you used to struggle with that, whether this was the problem, those things are no longer a problem. You become free from these things because of Calvary. Mm. Are people learning something? Yes, 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 yes. Very deep, very, very. YouTube, are you there? Let me see YouTube if people are there. Let me see YouTube if people are there. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Is everybody following? Yes, yes, yes. When you come out of, when you, when you leave Calvary, that is where now you learn now, ah, I, I need, 
I need to now, uh, I need to now, uh, when you leave that place now, you're determined for God. Mm. This is where now God starts to, to, uh, to, 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 to speak to you a little bit. You start now, the, the manifestation of God's power starts to be seen through you because this is the place now whereby you have come to know the authority of being a child of God. Mm. The Holy Spirit hasn't like filled you yet. Mm. But in this place now, you start walking like a child of God. Mm. The first detour that will take you out of the path is a city called vain glory. Mm. That is the first city that catches you on your way when you leave Calvary. After some walk, there's a turn. This road is still straight, but there's a town called, town called Vain Glory. Mm. I've been a Christian 50 years. You know, I've walked with the Lord. Vanity starts coming out of you. Mm. If you allow vanity to continue, what will happen is you find yourself that you left the path and found yourself in another place. Mm. I just want to know about angel. You know, I know about this. I know about that. Vain glory. Knowing without really bearing any seeds mm. or any fruits. Mm. Vain glory. I'm just showing you these little things to show you that God doesn't want us to perish. But heaven is for faithful. Mm. Faithfulness doesn't mean you ha won't have hiccups. But to be faithful is the ability to pick yourself up and to continue. Y to be faithful means I'm not making my abode in sin. Mm. That's what faithfulness is. When you pass vain glory, you go a little bit ahead. There are two roads you you find. The war to heaven is always in the middle. But there are two roads you find. One is called distraction. Another one is called danger. Mm. Destruction and danger. But the way to heaven is in the middle. If you go on the way of destruction, you will die. If you also go in the way of danger, <laughs> you also die. Mm. None of these roads out of that city actually give you any advantage. Mm. They all kill. This is where some ministers thought that I'm going to sneak and just do this. Scandals come out and it destroys their ministry. Mm. This is why you find some ministers now, they would even silence people by, you know, some people are doing some very, I don't even want to discuss about it, but it's some very sad stuff. This is where people try to do something to appear more than what they are because they look for a shortcut thinking that it will take them forward, but it's not taking, because those roads, all the other roads detour backwards. They take you out of this, the way of truth and takes you away. Mm -hmm. But these two roads, danger and destruction, they actually go forward, but on the side. So you think you're going ahead, but you die. Mm. And the reason why there are two roads, one called danger and one called distraction, is because at this point of your journey, you go to a hill, you reach a hill called the hill of difficulty. The hill of, of difficulty. So when you reach this location called the hill of difficulty, danger on one side, distraction on one side. So a lot of people, when they get to this place, they think I can just go around that mountain and go back on the road. But none of them go around the mountain. All of them lead you to die. This is where our faithfulness is tested. Mm. Because you have to go uphill. Is somebody following this? Yes, Baba. Yes. 
This is where people approach and say, ah, why are you being a Christian for so long and there's no money? Come join this, come join that. Uh, we'll give you this and you do this and you just have an advantage like this. You do this and you do this, you just have an advantage like this. You want to be like this, I will show you. This is where now people who are called by God end up now entering jujus. This is where people who are called by God start entering whereby they become greedy. They start cheating their way mm. of being faithful. Mm. Yet it is in the faithfulness that we cultivate the true power of God that mm. changes the world. Mm. This is a very dangerous place. A lot of people have taken the shortcut thinking that it will make them go somewhere else. When you come out of that hill of difficulty, you get to a place called the beautiful palace. It is in the beautiful palace after the hill of difficulty that this is the place that now the Holy Spirit fills you. Mm. Remember the disciples went through the hill of difficulty. When Jesus was arrested, they all scattered. Then when he was crucified, they, had, they were in despair. Then Jesus gave them a command, stay together and stay faithful. When they were with one mind and with one accord, then there was a rushing wind. Then the Holy Spirit came down as tongues of fire upon their head. When you leave that place, you go to the beautiful palace. This is where by now you are given the gift that God called you to have. Mm. Whether it's the ability to prophesy, whether it's the ability of deliverance, whether it's the ability of this, whether it's that, this is where now you are anointed mm. big time for the ministry that is before you. Mm. This is what David had to go through. When he got anointed, he got favor with uh, Saul. When he went to, when Saul just realized this guy is getting fame, he went to the hill of difficulty, started sleeping. In the wilderness, they are seeking to kill him. He's going through all these crazy things. He starts going through all these things. But after that, that's when he got the throne. Mm. This is where David became a super warrior. <sighs> but after... After you pass the beautiful place where you are anointed, you meet the valley of the shadow of death. It is another shortcut to hell. Mm. The valley of the shadow of death. This is where you have a close call, like you're going to lose your life after God has anointed you. This is where you almost lose everything because you want to follow God. This is where you almost lose your own life. The value of the shadow of death. But because of what is in you and what God has given you, if you are faithful, you will be able to cross through the value of the shadow of death because it's just a shadow. But many get to this place. They think it is their end. They give up. They run back. They die. Because once you enter the shadow of death and you don't go through it, you either die or you'll be trapped by the fortress that you left a few miles away mm. or kilometers away. I went through the valley of the shadow of death. Some of you know the story. Those who are close to me, they know the story. I went through very difficult times. When people see me right now, they see our prophet looks nice and this, this. Ah, you have no idea what I went through. And I've not arrived yet. When you leave this place, the value of the shadow of death.
you get to a city. This is a very dangerous city. And I, myself, I'll be honest with you. And I won't deceive you. There was a time of my life that I was trapped in this city. I'm being honest with you. And this is something I said I will be sharing a lot of my spiritual experiences and I will share it with you because I'm honest. I'm going to be honest and tell you. Amen. 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 When you pass the valley of the shadow of death, there is a city called Vanity Fair. This is where by anything kind of goes, kind of place, whereby you feel like you can still mess up and still be a Christian, still do this and think that you're a Christian. At this point of my life, I'm going to be real with you guys. How many people want me to be real? <laughs> Let me see how many people want, to want me to be real. Let me see people comment. Let me see people comment. Could you wipe this for me, please? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me see how many people want to hear from me to say something about this, my personal experience. Papa. Mm. Uh, Veda Simpson is saying, your transparency is saving lives, Papa. God bless you. Ah, God is good. There's a lot of comments. When you get to this city, Vanity Fair, let me tell you my experience. In this point of my life, I was getting very wrong advice from a lot of people. And it was not a very comfortable time. But I allowed that counsel of people that had gone ahead of me steer me the wrong direction. And I was praying, but I was praying without breakthrough because I didn't understand what was going on, but I did not understand that I had loosened up more than I should have because of who I was listening to. This is the one point of my life whereby, and this is a while ago, long, long time ago, this is the point of my life where I wasn't praying too much. Hmm. Because everything just was like, ah, I'm a prophet and this and that and that and that, you know. I joined the prophets in the sense like how everybody is. Yet me, I was not like that when the Lord was bringing me up. One night, I was meditating and in prayer. To be honest with you, I saw myself in a city. And the city was so big. And in every house in that city, people were just enjoying themselves. It was just vanity upon vanity upon vanity upon vanity upon vanity upon vanity. And I realized that I was stuck in Vanity Fair. I looked for a way to escape with my own strength in the realm of the spirit. And I couldn't. And God told me, go back to your first love. I did not call you to do what everybody else is doing. I did not call you to walk the way everybody else is walking. I called you to do what I gave you to do. I fasted and prayed for days. The Lord returned me to that same city in, again. And this time, God showed me a way out. Mm. And I was able to escape the city. Amen. Amen. And when I escaped the city, this is where I speak about a place of snakes, 
have you ever heard me speak about it? Mm -hmm. I found myself in a place called Midgard. And I met my angel waiting for me in front of that forest. He had left me waiting for me outside the city because I was not supposed to be in that place. And when I got out of the city, I was reunited with the angel of God. And he grabbed me from the back and he took me through that forest. And I realized now when I was taken out of that city and through the forest where there were snakes and I had to fight and slay a serpent. I realized something immediately. My ministry changed. The voice of God changed. A lot of things in me transformed because God removed me from the trap. So many men of God are stuck in Vanity Fair. Mm. This is where people are sleeping around. This is where people, because now you, you know this is very close to heaven. Vanity Fair is not too far from heaven. This is where people start enjoying themselves in ways that they shouldn't, do things that they should not. How long I was in that place was not too long. And I thank God because of his mercy delivered me from there. And I was locked up in that city, not because I was doing anything you would see and say it was bad. I was taking counsel of people and I started having things in me that were not originally in me. Mm. Started making me entertain certain things that I would never entertain in a million years. Mm. I tell you these things to show you that anybody can fall. And that day I knew. And that day I knew that anybody can be destroyed. Anybody. Anybody can be destroyed. At any given time if somebody is not careful. Let me continue a little bit and then I think we'll stop. When you come out of Vanity Fair, you receive rest. But when you get a little rest, the rock road becomes very, very rocky. Meaning that you get some rest and comfort and it becomes comfortable. Then the road becomes rocky. Meaning that it is not the most comfortable. It starts, it's painful to remain on this road. You become weary and tired. So usually what a lot of people do is they leave the path and they walk besides the path. And when you walk besides the path, there is a giant, and I also got to this place. <laughs> when you leave the path and go outside the path, there is a giant called despair. It's mm. a demon. Mm. He will capture you and put you in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a prison called Doubting Castle. This is where you find a lot of men of God commit suicide. Oh, I've, I've been depressed, but I'm just preaching. Mm. It's like, how can you be a servant of God? You are mm. 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 under depression. It's because that demon is beating him. Mm. It's because that demon is beating her. This giant despair will put you into through difficult depression simply because you left the path. But there is a way out. Mm. There's definitely an escape out. Amen. This is where you find some men of God give up. They go and kill themselves.
This is where a lot of men of God, you, you don't know, but at home they just sm sit down, smoke marijuana. Mm. Mary J. <laughs> marijuana. I say marijuana for Africans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or they're just at home or just to ease themselves. They are dropping down bottles, mm. shooting shots, doing drugs. Ah, this makes us to relax. If you cannot find comfort in the presence of God, This is where people are doing all kinds of stuff. To ease them from, or pull them. This is a very difficult part. I remember, I did not understand, I was just in deep depression. I don't even know how I got depressed. I suffered, I won't lie to you. Suffered seriously. One night I spent night in prayer, I said, no, nah, God, it cannot be like this. I prayed that night. I prayed, oh Lord, open my eyes to see what is going on. Deliver me from this thing that I don't understand. And immediately my eyes were open and I saw a giant figure on a big horse dressed like an ancient knight with one of those things, you know those things they poke people. Mm. You know when the they lance were, huh? Yeah? What like is a it? jousting stick. What do you call it? It's like a lance or like a jousting stick. Yeah, that, that word. He had a big thing like that and that was the thing he was using to beat me. I saw this with my eyes. I'm not telling you in a dream, this was life. I saw it with my own eyes. I saw this, I lived this. And when I saw this, I cried, in the mighty name of Jesus, I began to pray and pray and pray and pray. And I saw that that guy's weapon fall, his armor fall. He fell off the horse and he ran one way, the horse ran the other way. Immediately depression left me. Wow, amen. This is where I left Doubting Castle. Mm. Because I started wondering. I even started thinking to myself, ah, and this is years ago. I started thinking of myself, I, maybe I should go, maybe I should go see a doctor. Maybe I should go see a doctor. Maybe the doctor will give me some pills. And, ah, but then I was like, me, why would I go get pills when I'm with God? You see, all these things started happening. So I said, nah, this is a trap. I started praying and God removed me from that. Amen. Amen. This is the same place the Lord Jesus was when he was in the Garden of Eden praying and sweating blood. He was mm. depressed. Mm. Wow. I'm telling you the truth. You know when you're stressed and depressed, you can actually, that's why he was sweating blood. Do you know how your blood pressure has to be for you to get to that place where you're like that? That God sent comfort. Not ease, but comfort. Hey, calm down. It's okay <laughs> mm. to remove that. It's because at that moment when he said, Father, if it is your will, let this cup of suffering pass. What is that? Doubt. It's like maybe there is another way to do this thing. I don't have to go to the cross. Mm. Wow. Are, are you getting what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But Jesus, because he was aware of what was happening, our Lord never said, Father, I pray, let this cup of suffering pass. He said, he still surrendered himself to his will. Mm. Mm. Said, if it is your will, Father, let this cup of suffering pass. Do you understand? If you are saying, God, if it is your will, let this thing change. It means I'm tired of it. Mm. I don't know if I can do it. Mm. I doubt that I can make it through it. Mm. Yeah. And this is why I tell people all the time, God does not mind doubt as long as you come to him with it. Mm. It becomes a problem if doubt leads you away from God. Mm. 
Is this making sense? Yes, Baba. YouTube, are you there? Critique Studios, God bless you. God bless you. Is this helping somebody? Yes, Baba. When you live and you survive Doubting Castle, <laughs> You pass another place of rest. In this part of, of rest is a temporary rest. But this is where now after this part of rest, a short temporary rest, you meet ignorance. The spirit of ignorance you meet in here. Because ignorance always tries to blaze his own trail. Ah, you know, ah, God speaks to me this way. Ah, God does this for me this way. Ah, God does this that way. Ah, God goes with me this way. Ah, God is with me like that. They never follow protocol. Ah, the Bible, you know, ah, the Bible, some chapters are true, some chapters are, you get what I'm saying? Mm. They just do, they want to do their own thing. But the problem is this. Some people will be saved from some of the cities that you go through, but they, they have to go back to the road, to the gate, get the invitation to go. Because anyone without the invitation is not entering heaven. Mm. Because it's only for those who are invited. Mm. Wow. When you pass that, you pass a place called Dead Man Lane. Please don't take that because the word just says what it is. And that's where the broad way to hell is another gate to hell is there. After you plus that place, that's where you find a, a flatterer. Again, ah, you are the greatest. Avoid that Aladdin <laughs> because it's a test. Every part time you pass any of these things you are promoted, you make a move in that world. So you pass there, you pass a place called Enchanted Grounds. Now, Enchanted Grounds is very dangerous because Enchanted Grounds is where this is where you get, um, you sleep as a Christian, you become lukewarm. This is where people just go and they just... Uh, you are grabbing your Bible, you want to read that. Uh, mm. There is a strong spirit of sleep in that location. Strong spirit of sleep in that location. This is why you go to some churches. It's dead. Lots of religion, but it's dead because they are asleep. You're wondering, you people, what happened to the miracles? What happens to the power of God? What happened to the message of God? What happened to this? But the church is so dead. Mm -hmm. Facebook, are you there? My son Fabian, God bless you. Grace Washington, soon I will. To stay, to pass through this place, your stamina in prayer has to be strong. You have to be that Christian that prays seriously. Because the moment you stop, you become lukewarm. Because this area is designed to make you lukewarm. Hmm. To dilute you, to put you to sleep. 
This is why Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. It was because of this location. When you pass this location, you enter the countryside where the shepherds like me or those who are serving God faithfully, they inhabit this land. It's called Land Beautiful. This place, there's a lot to eat, there's a lot to rest. This is where men of God that now have served God faithfully but are still in the world, they operate from this place. And they go down and bring people and bring them to this place. They go grab people and they bring them to this place because there is a river right in front of this. It's called the Black River or the River of Death. This is when you cross this river, you enter heaven. Mm. You meet the gates of heaven. Wow. This is why we say, ah, my auntie crossed the river. Or oh, they kicked the bucket. Or oh, they, they jumped the stream. You know, there are different words for it. Mm. But it's talking about this place, and it's a real place in the spiritual realm. It's wow. a real place. Wow. The goal is to be in this place. Beautiful, or be Beulah land, or beautiful land. This is where it's the, it's the garden before you cross the river to enter this, the celestial country. Mm. This is where now you live because you are complete Christian, lacking nothing. Now you're just waiting to die is gain, to live is Christ. Mm. Whether rapture happens, it should get you there, you'll be taken. Mm. Let me give you a cheat code on how to maintain this journey. You will never survive it unless you completely depend on God. Your rest, your assurance, your dependence must completely be in the Lord Jesus. You must accept the cross in its entirety. Not just the part that says you're going to heaven. <laughs> the whole thing. What did he accomplish on the cross? Because as a child of God, if you don't know what he, what he accomplished on the cross, it is impossible. It is absolutely impossible for you to walk with him. Jesus was not just dead for your sins. That's what everybody talks about. But what about those who have received him but sin has not gone away? Mm. Uh, the Bible says our flesh was crucified with him. That the life we live in the flesh is no longer us but it is Christ. If this truth has not entered you, you're, you, you would make it through the journey. How will you? If you don't depend on the angels of God, that God will send you because of your faithfulness to him, how will you defend yourself on this journey? Because the journey, what I didn't mention a lot was that how many angelic visitations you will have. Because the more you are heading towards heaven, the more you will encounter them. Mm. And they are there to help you and to pull you up. Amen. Amen. What am I trying to tell you in short? Don't believe this false doctrine people are practicing. Once saved is not always saved. Mm. It's not true. It's a lie. It's a lie from the pit of hell. This is a life you must live completely dedicated to God. That doesn't mean be religious. It means be dependent on God. I want to tell you to do something today. With all this that you have heard, you know exactly where you are spiritually. Did you, do you feel like you know where you are? By what you heard today? Be honest. I think so. Uh, that, that's not bad. 
Do you think you know where you are spiritually? From the journey? I have an idea. You have an idea. That's good. What about you, Mr. Jels? I don't think I have an idea at all. You should know where you are. You should take your life and look at, mm, in this place, where am I? If you don't know, how will you walk? Who goes to a place where they don't know how to get there? That's why we have Google Maps and, and Ways and, you know, the maps. Because you can't walk on a journey you don't know where you're going. That doesn't make any kind of, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, am I right? So if you don't know where you are, how do you know how to pray, how to get to where you should be? Mm. Question, Papa. Yes. So, in the examples uh, given, mm -hmm. um, many a time it would pertain to like uh, ministers, but uh, how would someone, those that aren't in ministry, relate so they know exactly? No, this was not about ministers. This was about every Christian. Is that what you're asking? Yes. No, we all, you have to understand this. Just because you're a minister does not mean you're not going through life like everybody else. There's no difference. It's just grace is different because some will go through a little difficult thing so that they can help others get through it. That's all that it is. We are all on the same road. The greatest among you must be servant of all, not president of all. If I went through these things, Jesus said, the Lord Jesus said, the servant is not greater than the master. If they hated me, they will hate you. But fear not, I, overcome, I overcame the world. Meaning that what Jesus went through, we are, not, we are not free from it. We will overcome because he overcame. Mm -hmm. But will we go through it? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. When Jesus walked this earth, Jesus walked to the place called Calvary. That's where Jesus left. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Because he had to be atonement in that place. So from there, there is a shortcut to heaven because he died for us there. Mm -hmm. And from there, he ascended. So the, the, the apostles' journey began with Jesus at the Mount of Calvary. Now, if you look at the map, mm -hmm. the way I've explained it, does it make sense now? So... It doesn't matter whether you're a bishop, you're an evangelist, or just somebody that you just think uh, you're just a regular Christian. You're not free from it. Does that make sense? Yes. YouTube, are you there? I'm about to finish. Queen Marcia, God bless you. God bless you for your seed. God bless you. I want you to do something whether where you are is day or night. Go pray. Make things right with God. <laughs> if you're not sure things are right with God, don't have vain, don't be ignorant. And continually ask the Lord for help. In those places that you're weak, present your weakness to God because he knows them. But you cannot say he's the Lord of your life if he doesn't rule your life. Jesus does not possess you. He takes what you give him. Rambo McClary, God bless you.
Is, is this making sense? Yes, sir. Go sit down. Think about how you should be walking with God and understand that you cannot do it without Him. Ask Him to change your heart. You will not be judgmental. Ask Him to help you to stay on the path because you don't want to miss heaven. Ask Him to hold your hand because tomorrow is not promised. You could go to sleep tonight and not wake up. Where will you be? How sure are you? <laughs> After watching this, So, so Antonia Wiggins, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. So you see how sometimes we have ignorant faith. Because now you look at scripture, you realize like, hey. <laughs> Listen, God wants you to look good. God wants you to dress good. Nothing wrong with those things. But the Bible says, let us make sure first the adorning on the inside is good too. Spend time, look at yourself inside. Let your state now, your condition now, be really a cry to God. Let it be a legit cry to God, eh? Papa Jesus, nah, I don't want to be like this. Lord, help me. I'm tired of being like this. This cycle of doing the same thing and doing the same thing and being the same way, the same way, the same. I don't want it no more. Lord, <laughs> I don't want it anymore. Help me. Holy Spirit, help me. I need you now more than ever. I realize that I may be on a slippery slope. Lord, have mercy on me. Help me. You have to have that groaning for Jesus. So many people just know how to cry to God when they are worshiping, but you don't understand how to cry for yourself. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. This makes you tremble. This will not make you play around with your soul. I receive is good, but make sure you, you, <laughs> your soul is in check. What's the point for you to gain all this world, get amazing prophecies, and you end up in hell? Mm -hmm. Ah, that person, God blessed him deeper, but he's in hell. <laughs> Pointless. That's true. Pointless. That guy was deep prophetically, but he's in hell. Doesn't matter. Facebook, are you there? Periscope. God bless everybody. So, Papa. Yes. The scripture you, you mentioned. Facebook. Uh, Facebook uh -huh. The scripture you mentioned uh, mm -hmm. earlier in the beginning, mm -hmm. when the Lord says, uh, "Many shall come saying, Lord, Lord, did we not?" Mm -hmm. They weren't faithful to the end. They were not faithful to the end. They were faithful maybe until when they got gifts. That's why some of them say, "We prophesied in your name. We did this in your name." Then say, I don't know you. Then another one comes and says, uh, Lord, uh, he say, goes to them and said, you dressed me. They say, when did we dress you? You fed me. When did I do this? When you did it to one another. You see, they were focused on serving people, but others were focused on prophesying people. <laughs> mm. That's why even though I'm gifted with prophecy, you notice I don't like prophesying. I've ever prophesied to you guys at home. I don't. I actually avoid it.
I just want you to go and pray. Go and spend time with Jesus. Whether you are at night, whether it's day, take time and make sure that your walk with Christ is right. Don't miss heaven for temporary things. God bless you. This is Prophet Lovi. Shalom, shalom. Amen. I saw God giving him a platform in Hollywood, this one. I saw him becoming very known and very famous. I don't know what you do, but I saw your star just going Because when I looked at him, I saw him becoming as big as Kevin Hart, this one. Oh, what do you do? <laughs> Stand up comedy. <laughs> in the realms of the spirit, when you were carrying him, there was a big challenge in the realm of the spirit. It was a difficult pregnancy to yeah. carry him yeah. to the point that it looked like you're going to lose him at some point yeah. because I remember I am seeing it in the realms of the spirit when you're about four months going to five months yeah. I saw you bleeding that yeah. you thought that you actually lost him. Yes, yes. Professor, I am trying to understand what these two angels are saying because I'm hearing one saying God with us and the other one is saying Emmanuel. Uh, what is that? I saw him doing this, throwing seeds. When people are throwing seeds, it means they have a calling, a pastoral calling to feed people and to raise people. Huh? You said what? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.